Sneak, sneak. <laughs> Did you just see that? I think I saw a prinny. No, my lord, that was probably just all in your head. Hmm. In that case, it's fine. Are you the ones who were tarnishing our dearly departed Sir Amizel's name? Bastards! You fools are all being blinded by the newspaper's lies! I won't forget this! I'll prove that I'm still alive once I get to talk to the chief! I'm gonna report this to my father, and you'll all get busted down to the mailroom! Using your father's name again? <sighs> so pathetic. He's acting like a spoiled peon. Being around him is bad for Desco's final boss training. Rascal, why did you come here? Wasn't it to prove that you exist? Or did you come here to reclaim your identity as your father's son? What? For both, of course. My existence and my identity as the President's son come as a set. Is that so? Haven't you realized that your existence can easily be erased without your identity? Why don't you leave your father's protection behind, stand up for your own free will, and take a step forward with your own two feet? It's the only way you'll ever be able to prove you exist. Oh, shut up! I don't need to be preached to by a printy instructor! I'm the Netherworld President's only son! I'm gonna report you all to my father to receive severe punishment! <laughs> severe punishment. Hmm, good luck with that. You guys are in luck today. I'm giving you another double header. Since the uh, chapter after this one doesn't have any story. And I think those are kind of boring to watch by themselves, as usual. Um, as a result, this episode's like three times as long as the last one. But uh, the, I, I really hate this chapter because these maps take a long time to complete. I mean, if you're just looking at this right now, these ninjas are way too high to attack. And even if I could hit them... They're standing on top of invincibility Take panels. This. So this is a long game of fetch, basically. And I just keep throwing the blocks in sequence until I knock them off their perch. I so I have this. to make two teams, really, to go around the map separately. It's not terribly difficult, but it, it just takes forever. And I think this is the first time we fight the... Uh, the the Alrons or the uh, the Flower Beast group. Um, by themselves, they're not that threatening, but uh, they they can heal adjacent uh, allies. So that can be a bit annoying. Also, they used to have this one of the craziest attack reaches that could hit like seven to eight spaces away. It was nuts. So in the, in the sky too, primarily in the in the item world, they you're never safe if they were around because they could just hit you from the craziest distances. Mmm, that's good monster. Uh, Here I come. But enough about that. Let's get to the character of the day, and I'm gonna knock off another main character Please. since I have ample time to talk about it this time, and we're gonna go to Valvatorez's loyal sidekick Fenric. Good old Fenric. Here we go. Fenric is a loyal friend and ally. He's a prime damage dealer throughout the game, and he's fairly hard to kill as well. The key to getting the most out of Fenric is learning how to deploy him. Because his abilities are tied with Val with Valvatores, you should use both of them at the same time. And there's no reason you wouldn't do this. They, they should always be a pair. Um, if you want Fenric to attack first, deploy Valvatores near Fenric and get the free boost to, to stats from Tyrant's Slave. You can always undo Valvatores' movement afterwards and, say, and have him go somewhere else. After Fenric gets his dual canine attack, his expanded range makes it possible to have Valvatores attack first. For this, have both characters get in position, let Valvatores attack, 
and then let Fenric join the combo with his dual canine attack. Put both characters in many of the same groups, because they stand together so often, any increase in their team attack percentage or to shared stats to the gain system is a big deal. Not surprisingly, Valvatorus and Fenric are both heart cannon candidates. This scores constant free attacks throughout the game. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I did. Um, preferred weapons are fists and axe. Axes. Uh, neutral to fire, 50% resistance to wind, negative 25% resistance to ice. Uh, Fenric, like the uh, the Kusif dog type enemy, uh, all of his elementals are wind based, which can either be good or bad depending on the enemies. Uh, let's see, his first skill is Swift Power Shot, if you've seen me do it. Uh, the power is the worst possible, it's F. It, it attacks two spaces away and knocks the enemy back a panel. Um, I think it looks neat, but you are not going to be using this attack at all after you learn his next attack. Dual Canine Attack. Or as he always says, Dual Canine Fist, which you'll see eventually. Um, it, it's a single target attack, but it can hit three tiles away in any direction. So, the versatility is fantastic. And you can use this, like the guide said, for put it Valvatoris next to opponent, and then you can uh, attack with dual canine attack from the side or behind uh, for the boost in stats and adjacent, uh, and it possible to work uh, team combos too. And Valvatoris, uh, sorry, Fenrir gets a lot better once he learns that. And then. Oh, also, all of these are based on attack and speed as well, just like fists. Therefore, this go. is probably the reason why you want to give him a fist over an axe. I can't, I can't imagine anyone get, actually giving him an axe. To be honest. Uh, and then his last move, Vanargander. Vanargander. Vanargander? Uh, it's. <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's like V A N A R G A N D R. Grr. Um, the. The area effect of this is so weird. It's like a, it's like a cross right in front of you, and then two extra diagonal tiles to the side. It's weird. It, it's it's also wind based. The power is D, and um, it hit a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven enemies. So uh, it, it's similar to um, uh, help me, goddess. That all mouse could use from the Sky of Three. Here I come. Um, let me read the description. Though costly per use, this skill has a place when Fenric wants to take on groups. The area of effect for this attack is substantial, allowing Fenric to hit multiple opponents more often than not. Use this to soften groups earlier in an encounter and then deploy other characters as finishers. Uh, again, this is best in the item world and character world where there are a bunch of enemies more likely to be grouped together. Yeah. Uh. But check the resistances first, because if they're all resistant to win, you're going to find yourself be doing a lot less damage. And don't forget to deploy uh, Valvatoras next to him to, for the uh, stat boost. Uh, base aptitudes. HP, 130. SP, 90. Attack, 120. Defense, 100. Intelligence 90, Resistance 90, Hit 100, and Speed 130. With good HP and speed, uh, he's actually uh, pretty durable. Uh, give him, give him a good pair of shoes to increase his speed and movement, and um, a decent pair of armor with a, with good HP in it, and uh, he'll be hard to take out. And he does decent damage too. Uh, especially if you always deploy him next to Valvatoris. His abilities are Tyrant Slave increases his stats by 30% when adjacent to Valvatoris. That's why you have them in pairs, people. 30% uh, is a pretty big boost, you know. Unfortunately, his other abilities aren't that useful. Uh, you have Revenge, which increases his stats. But more when Valvatoris is deployed is below 100% health. The lower the health, the more the effect. The uh, problem with this is you don't want Valvatoris to be at low health. Just to make Fenric stronger. Yeah. You're probably going to keep Valvatoris as healthy as possible. And since Valvatoris usually ends up being a lot of people's best character. 
he's not going to be that weak a lot of the time anyway. So I don't find this ability useful at all. And then there's Symbol of Loyalty. Takes damage from Valvatoras when the two are adjacent. Um, I, I don't know the exact effects of this, although I don't know why you'd want Fenric to take damage for Valvatoras when Valvatoras has better defensive stats. Uh, yeah, he could he could take hits a bit better than Fenric does. So again, I I don't see the point in that really. Uh, it took me a long time, but what I did was I just passed on a uh, special boost. Sorry, physical boost from Valvatoras on the Fenric, since all of his special attacks are physical based. Um. Free boost and damage, which he kind of needs eventually, especially if you happen to not be by Valvatoras. It, it really is the best thing for keeping him e effective. Uh, yeah, otherwise, um, because the, the, unlike swords and some of the other skills, uh, I'm finding fist attacks to be underwhelming. Uh, I know you learn Big Bang later, which is, you know, one of the most useful skills learn, but until then, until Fenrir gets high enough to learn those, you have to make do with exploding fists and the very awkward to use, uh, oh, I don't remember, it was like special symbol or something, what, what was that thing called, let's see, it, it, experience, see, uh, special burst. Yeah. It requires three yellow tiles, and you're never going to hit things with it, and it's also wind-based, which all your normal specials are anyway. I mean, you don't really get a good damage attack until Rising Dragon, and I'm not sure what level you learn that at. Well over- it, oh, it's over a hundred, that's to be sure. Until then, you have to make do with the very weak Exploding Fists, and, but Dual Canine Attack is kind of good, and then Argander work. But, as for fist skills themselves, uh, yeah, nothing really good until the fourth one. And that's Fenric. Uh, I think Adele was overall a better, uh, fist user, but then again, he's also from a game where, well, in the second game, his ability wasn't anything that special, I think he just did more damage to higher level enemies, but he also, um, in that game, you learn skills um, just by using your attacks more, so you learn the fist moves much faster. And also, you had some better attacks like Lion's Roar, which, which hits all around you. And Tiger's Charge had really great distance. So, uh, and then in this guy at three, uh, his his main ability I think is better because it increased. 30% more damage done to single opponents. I think that's pretty damn good. So when I when I download Adele in this game, he'll probably be my primary uh, damage um, fist user as well, like he was before. Simply because I don't think, um, well, he's not dependent on Valvatoras to be um, at his most effective. But, you know, Fenric is great during the game. I really like using him. He is pretty, he's pretty well-rounded. And see what I mean about this chapter taking forever? Did I use Bloody Hole yet? I didn't mention. I know I get it. I, mean, I use it in this chapter at some point. Look at that. I had four heart cannon attacks lined up. But while we're at it, that's one down, and let's get on to the new monster that appears in this class, the Alron, or the, you know, that's the base one. I think it's the, just the flower monster, Flora Beast. These things are interesting, you know, I, there we go, bloody hole. Shoot, let's watch. Here I come! Ah, where is this coming from? Oh, sea urchin attack. And I miss. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, Floor Beasts. Floor Beasts are terrific healers and support casters throughout the game. 
The roles change periodically, but this class has the ability to adapt well at your groups as your groups begin to need new things. At first, floor beasts heal wonderfully. Their direct healing combines well with sweet aroma. Characters that are beaten up can cluster around the floor beasts during quiet rounds, or they can even hide with the floor beasts in the back rows while the fighting continues. In maps with dangerous status elements, floor beasts should get uh, prevention up and stick with the main party. Multiple people immune to ailments can decrease the difficulty in an encounter where enemies are relying on such tricks, although I don't find that often to be the case. Flora Beasts and Magic Knights are especially fond with each other. Flora Beasts with Herbal Therapy should stick with Magic Knights to keep their element stats as high as possible. Even in the late game when healing and prevention are at their worst, Flora Beasts maintain their usefulness. They cast offensive buff spells like Braveheart. These are useful spells so you can uh, have it, still have a place for a good Flora Beast. You know, I've noticed that. This was a class I've kind of always been meaning to make and use, but never really got around to. I was always just so into direct damage, but these this is like a, a jack of all trades and master of most of them. Uh, magic change type is a staff, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, let's see. They can learn up to the giga level of wind magic. They learn up to the giga level of heal magic, as well as several boosting attacks like shield, braveheart, and magic boost. Pretty handy. Uh, let's see. They are neutral of fire, 50% resistant to wind, and 25% resistant to ice. So no elemental weaknesses. Not bad. Uh, yeah, the class name, the Alron. Eh, something. Okay, HP stat is 80, SP 120, attack 110, defense 80, intelligence 110, Resistance 130, Hit 100, and Speed 80. Uh, overall, not bad. Not, um, they can take magic pretty well. So that's why you keep them at range. And, you know, they have, they can attack physically or, um, with magic. Uh, give them the, the gray monster type weapons and you'll find them very versatile in being able to do damage with either. You can see, you have the Alron, the Nemophilia, the Farbidus, okay. The Belladonna, the Photinia, and the Parthenos, the Parthenosisis. Yeah, <laughs> sure. All right. Um, at the last level, their HP is 90, SP 145, <laughs> attack 135, defense 90, intelligence 135, resistance 155, hit 125, and speed 90. Overall, I think that's quite good. And they even have really good abilities. Like I said, uh, the first one, Sweet Aroma, recovers 20% of health for adjacent units at the end of each turn. Uh, handy for um, healing in during quiet rounds, like it said, where there aren't many enemies around and you don't want to spend a uh, turn healing manually yourself. Let's see, the next one, Prevention, prevents status effects to adjacent allies. Uh, highly situational, I wouldn't bother. Then we got relaxation, decreases SP consumption for adjacent allies by 50%. That could be handy. Um, if, if you remember to use it a lot, because if you power up certain attacks, SP costs can get very high. I'll shut up now. By the way, the Information Bureau is run by the Corruptor Mint, right? So, couldn't the false news have been spread intentionally? What? What, what did you say? I didn't expect that idiot to notice. Do you think that you may have already been abandoned by your dad? Oh, what are you talking about? I'm his only son! Father would never... But you're kind of a failure. Oh, uh, that's not my fault! Deflecting responsibility for your mistakes? How pathetic. You should start over as a prinny. Were you abandoned because you're so weak? In that case, you're just like Desco. I'll give you a little bit of my sympathy. Oh well, I think this experience will help you grow stronger anyway. 
I was pretty much neglected growing up, too. Kids grow up to be tougher when they have harsher upbringings, you know? You say that so casually. Were you abandoned, too? Uh-huh. I mean, it was basically the same thing. He's the worst dad ever. Big sis. <laughs> A bond among neglected children. Looks like our party is knitting together tighter than ever. Yes, my lord. However, I'm not sure if this is the kind of bond we're looking for. Hold on! I didn't say I was abandoned just yet! Actually, that's a theme I kind of noticed with this chapter that I wanted to point out. I, I, I'm, this is a Japanese game, but I can't help but think it pertinent about mis about um, getting the false message from you know the news and just being a blind follower and not coming to your own conclusions. You know, I, I don't want to get into it that much, but you know, bias in the media is pretty heavy and I think if you're not if you're not smart enough to uh, recognize it you know you're just doomed to follow and just listen to it as you're told I don't know I think I think it's kinda sad <sighs> politics very touchy subject these days um, this is another short um, and sweet map basically they're just sequestered off by the no entry blocks so you just gotta throw them one at one to break down the walls. It's it's not that tough. Um, and there are a few legendary chests in the corner to try to get. But where were we? Um. Oh yeah. Floor B and the last one, herbal therapy, increases elemental stats of adjacent allies by 50%. Uh, yeah, like the guy mentioned, that would be. It, this is if you use a magic knight like I do, and I'll re get to their uh, description eventually. But they have an ability called Elemental Force. I think it's Elemental Force. That might be their natural one, actually. What's one I'm thinking of? Um, do never find it fast enough. Time to bust some balls. Uh, no, that was it. Elemental Force. Um, your Elemental Resistant increases your ele Elemental Attacks. So they have, if you have a 25% resistance in fire, your fire spells have a 25% boost. So put a Floor Beast next to a Magic Knight, all their spell Elemental Spells are suddenly 50% stronger. Quite nice. Um, and definitely handy until you, um get the innocents to max out their ele uh, their elemental resistances that way. But it could also be useful for any magic caster that you happen to teach elemental force to. One of the main reasons you should make that um, a magic knight. Although I like using them by themselves. So look, very good um, support class by the sound of it. Uh, let's see. There's... Uh, special attacks. First one is Feast Slasher. It's uh, three tiles, powers F, horribly weak. You probably won't be using this much. Next is Thorny Blaster. Um, no, that's not next. That's third. Second is Spiral Needle. Um, I think it's one of those attacks that only hits adjacent enemies all around you. I hate those kind of moves, to be honest. I don't think they're worthwhile. Brace yourself. Thorny Blaster. Um, if you've ever seen Gurren Lagann, huge reference to that with that move. It's hysterical. I, I kind of want to make a Flora Beast just so I can use that move. Um, powers B, which is good. I mean, that, that's that's pretty high power. Not not every class has moves that powerful. And then finally is Flower Profusion. Um. The power is weaker than Thorny Blaster at C, but it, and uses us more SP. It might it might be a ranged attack where you can hit more enemies. It's four tiles. And then the magic chain skills are Flower Wave, um, 
power is E. Oh yeah! All of, it's, all of these special attacks are based on attack, by the way, not intelligence. So you want intelligence for your wind and healing magic, and good attack for your normal skills. And the final match change is Twin Heart Attack. Power of C based on intelligence. Could be nice. I don't know. I've, I've never seen it. Um, all in all, my thoughts. Uh, I wish I'd made one. Um, they, they seem quite useful. And not without their own... Uh, you know, it seems like they can hit decently hard as well. Specifically with Thorny Blaster. And I think their aptitudes are good in areas that the rest of your party might be lacking. Not to, um, I mean, you have good resistance and you have good elemental resistances, so you could, um, most char most other classes are physical based or evasion based, if anything, so resistance character could be handy. Um, I don't think the magic change is particularly useful, however, Picture this, if you fuse, if you make a mag a giant Flora Beast, and um, you can fit eight characters around them, and they would all heal 20% of their health at the end of that turn. That, that sounds pretty neat. I almost have time for a third one, but I'm not going to bother. I'm wondering which one I should do next. If I'm remembering correctly, there are two more chapters. I mean, there are two more parts to this chapter. Let me see, I have the guy here. Okay, uh... Yeah, two more. And they're, they're both a bitch. Like, the boss level of this alone, I think, took me at least a half hour to beat. It was quite difficult. Um, and the next one just has a really annoying Time layout. I, I hate the huge maps that take forever to traverse. What is, actually, I'm just curious. What does the guide even say for the strategy for this level? Why not, right? This map has two green treasure chests for anyone fast this. enough to grab them. To do this, you must break through several chambers in under five rounds. Each area is sanctioned off with a no-entry block, so you must use your characters to throw similarly colored blocks into the barriers. Meanwhile, a team of office workers and Kusith come after some people. Some of them use ranged attacks, so don't get close to the barriers unless you're ready to take a hit or two at the end of the turn. As with many fights in this episode, characters have a high hit rating and will be at their best. To open the way, break through both sets of blocks on the right, steal two more geo blocks on that cubby, and break <laughs> cubby. Wow, that takes me back to kindergarten. And bring them to the left side of the map. Once you destroy the other two barriers, you can attack the green chest before they're destroyed. Before they're destroyed. This guy is so sloppy with the typos. You can tell they didn't care about this at all. I don't think they expected anybody to play this game. Such a shame. A single character can often destroy both chests on round four as long as they have... Okay. Yeah, that's... I, I can't even bother. Honestly, this guy is kind of is a waste of money. Please don't buy it. I'm, I'm just getting what little entertainment value there is by just reading the descriptions. There is no important strategy for the post-game or Here grinding. I, I mean, I map strategy itself, that's the easy part. Nobody Here needs to know that. However, there's so much minutia when it comes to statisticians and the item world and the campaign and... Uh, they they could have done so much better. And, that, and the, the typos themselves. I've never seen so many typos in a guide. One one character section has an entirely other character description in there instead. That's inexcusable. You expect people to pay money for this? Ugh, don't make me laugh. Okay, what did I get? <laughs> a strength salve and an exertion belt. Uh, belts increase your attack. You should give one to Desco. I don't know why I didn't. Uh, and the, and the salves? I'm not quite sure what they do. I think they increase your stats in the middle of a fight. Permanently or temporarily, I'm not sure. But if you've been playing the game yourself, mark down in the comments what monster classes or unique generics you like using throughout the story. 
clearly you've seen what um, I'm used to doing. Uh, I make my mages, and I use the gene I use the main characters a lot, and I I really like magic knights and wood golems. Uh, I I'll, I'll make a wood golem eventually. I kind of wish I made an hour. Uh, yeah, a flora beast. But um, yeah, say what uh, classes you like to use. I'm curious if you play the game at all. I'm trying to figure out the prop, the best way to attack these remaining guys. There we go. I don't want to attack them from the front because of their evasion. Is this gonna be on the test? Ooh, they got all the ice one. More ice. This is loaded. I'd say it's the bottom of the ninth, but it looks like it's zero and zero. Man, even the Yankees would want to contract Fuka with that kind of performance. RBI? Zero! She just steals home every time she goes up to the plate. <laughs> She's a bitch that way. I might get the Fuka before the chapter's over. Get uh, a lot of the main characters out of the way. I've gone through half of them. Oh, and I just did a magic change for a hell of it. Um, Fuka not as great as she could have been. Her evility sucked, quite frankly. I bet if I had um, bother, if I took advantage of the character world and increased her aptitudes, she'd be a bit better. Any day now. Boop boop, slimy punch. <laughs> Not enough. Brace yourself. Brace yourself before you race yourself. I couldn't even attack. I sure like attacking little girls. Woo! Yeah. And that's all she wrote. <laughs> 